Hi. In the third part of the introduction, I want to briefly illustrate your productivity and efficiency analysis in action in the real world. Arguably, one of the most important and significant applications of uh, efficiency analysis has been the regulation of uh, local monopolies such as uh, uh, electricity distribution networks. So in this course, I will use as an illustrative uh, example the data of Finnish uh, electricity distribution uh, uh, firms. But uh, to fully, fully understand the, the setting where this data come from, I think it is also interesting to briefly consider this, how this actually this kind of uh, efficiency analysis is utilized in the, in the real world. So uh, the regulation of electricity distribution relates very closely to the broader theme of uh, deregulation of the energy market. So when we talk about the, the electricity distribution, very often people get confused with the, with the generation, transmission and, and distribution. So to be clear what we are actually talking about in our empirical example, uh, let me briefly to discuss you the, the supply chain of electricity in, the, in, in Finland and other Nordic countries. So firstly, recall that, uh, that uh, electricity generation is actually a competitive market in, in the Nordic countries. We have the famous North Pool energy exchange where, where buyers and sellers can trade uh, with electricity. But somehow this, uh, this uh, uh, electricity that is uh, generated uh, needs to be supplied to the final user. And for this, we need both high voltage transmission and uh, low voltage uh, distribution. In Finland, this, uh, this electricity system is organized so that we have a single national monopoly in the, in the high voltage transmission. This is called Fingrid. And then we have a large number of local monopolies in the distribution. So when we talk about the distribution firms, uh, we don't take into account any generation. We don't have also high voltage transmission, but we really focus on this uh, uh, low voltage uh, uh, distribution systems that are local monopolies in a, each area. So the types of capital inputs that, uh, that uh, these kind of companies have uh, include uh, underground cables, overhead lines, substations, and so on and so on. Like, like illustrated in this, uh, these diagrams. So in recent years, the prices and tariffs of, uh, of the local electricity distribution networks have uh, attracted a lot of public debate and, and quite heated debate, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, here in Finland. And several of the companies have increased the prices uh, and, uh, and uh, which has really angered many, many consumers. And, uh, and uh, many people in Finland have the impression that, uh, that uh, this uh, electricity distribution is extremely problematic here in Finland uh, compared to other, other countries. And uh, some, some even claim that it's, it's like a legalized robbery. So I disagree with many of these, these claims, but let me come back to that shortly. So how can we then prevent the uh, the abuse of market power by this kind of local monopolies. Here is a uh, quotation from a famous article by, by Andre Schleifer, which uh, discusses the notion of yardstick competition. So from the strategic perspective and from the theory of regulation, uh, the regulation of the electricity distribution networks is actually um, a relatively um, good setting in the sense that we do observe multiple local monopolies. In fact, in Finland, we have uh, uh, quite a many local monopolies, which gives possibility to utilize the Schleifer's idea of yardstick competition, so that we can actually create a, a virtual market where the companies are forced to compete in the absence of the real competition, because these local monopolies are, are natural monopolies. There's no competition, but we can force them to compete against their other local monopolies in other regions. Of course, uh, here comes to the question of this, uh, these different regions are different, the companies are different, uh, 
uh, urban companies are different from the rural companies. But as Schleifer argues that if we can take into account this uh, heterogeneity of companies and their operating environments into account, we can still uh, use the yardstick competition in his terminology with this kind of reduced form regulation. And this is also the basic idea uh, of the regulation that is used in Finland and other Nordic countries. And also taking into account the heterogeneity is also where the frontier estimation techniques actually come into play in the, in the regulation. So let me also briefly illustrate the, the, the cost dispersion in the, in the Finnish electricity distribution networks. So I think I will use this kind of kind of scatter diagrams quite a lot in the course, so it's useful to learn to read them. So here, each of these blue di diamonds indicate uh, uh, a single observation of, uh, of uh, electricity distribution networks. On the horizontal axis, we have uh, plotted the variable cost, uh, and on the vertical axis, we have uh, uh, supply of energy. So uh, again, recall that these blue diamonds indicate one company in a, in a, in a given year. And actually, this, uh, this diagram has been scaled so that the three largest companies are not uh, visible in the, in the diagram. So this scatter plot indicates that uh, in Finland, we have a large number of uh, very small companies which are close to this uh, origin in this diagram. But there is also very large dispersion in the variable cost per, per output supplied. So the idea of the yardstick competition to summarize would be, we need to get some kind of benchmark, some kind of yardstick that these companies are compared to. And this is illustrated by this uh, blue line. We can think about it as a, as a, as a frontier production function or, 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 or cost frontier, if you like. Uh, so this blue line, can be can be thought of as the as the as the frontier that we discussed uh, previously, and the idea of using the frontier in the regulation is that uh, the the regulator can can uh, allow the companies to charge not only the observed cost but but actually the efficient cost level uh, in in the through the regulation. So I come back to this point in a, in a, in a while. So the basic idea in the in the Finnish energy regulation is that uh, the company is actually imposing a, a, what we call revenue cap. So the revenue cap defines the maximum acceptable revenue that these local monopolies can charge to their customers. And how the regulator determines the revenue cap is based on actually on the costs, so the input side. And to determine the acceptable level of total cost, which the companies can can charge, uh, they determine on one hand the, the fixed cost based on the capital asset pricing model or CAPM. And for the variable cost part, uh, uh, official cost frontier is used as a benchmark. So this is where the frontier estimation techniques come to the play. And uh, the idea here with the, with the setting the revenue cap equal to the acceptable total cost is that also in the competitive marketplace, uh, uh, the total revenue would equal total cost, so there would be no excess profits. Of course, the, the economic uh, profit uh, does include uh, a fair return for the invested capital, so that is the fixed cost part. So if you're interested in this uh, more strategic aspects and regulation aspects of the, of the conditional yardstick competition and uh, use of frontier estimation techniques, on this slide, I have a link to this kind of technical report where I have discussed these issues in more detail. But uh, it is not necessary to go to extremely many, many details to, for the, to understand the empirical example. So I go more directly to this uh, estimation of the variable cost part, which is an important part, of course, in the, in the, in the overall uh, regulation of electricity distribution firms. So in this slide, I have, uh, I have uh, indicated the evolution of the frontier estimation methods uh, in the Finnish electricity distribution regulation. So uh, 
the use of the frontier estimation method started in the first regulation period and 2005 to 2007. Of course, before that, the regulator had already used the um, DEA, for example, in case by case manner, for example, in court cases when they when they um, had to prove that for for inefficient practices. But since 2005, the the use of frontier estimation has been systematic in the sense that every distribution company has been subject to this kind of efficiency assessment on, on a yearly basis. So in the first regulation period, uh, uh, the data envelopment analysis approach was used. Uh, uh, in the second regulation period, and uh, the regulator uh, continued to use DEA, but also, also took uh, the stochastic frontier analysis uh, as, a, as an, another alternative uh, to be on, on side by side and um, efficiency improvement targets and the, and the, and the uh, yardstick that determines the, the, uh, the acceptable revenue was determined based on the average of the DEA and SFA scores. So I, came, I, I became uh, involved in the energy regulation in 2010 when the Finnish regulator was preparing for the third regulation period, 2012-2015. Uh, and um, with the work with, uh, with my colleagues, we then uh, introduced the stoned estimation framework to the, to the regulation. Because stoned is essentially a generalization of both DEA and SFA. So rather than uh, take average of two, um, two um, special cases, we, we introduced a more, more general and more flexible framework, uh, stoned. And it continues to use, be in, in use uh, currently. So for the fourth and fifth regulation period, uh, uh, we developed the framework further together with the, with the regulator. So now the estimation based on the panel data, we also take into account multiple inputs and outputs and, uh, and also the bad outputs uh, modeling the interruptions. But in this course, we mainly focus on the case of the third regulation period. So this, this is the brief characterization of the cost frontier model that the regulator was using in the 2012-2015 period. And uh, I introduced this one because, because we can then more easily see the data development analysis and stochastic frontier analysis as the special cases. Uh, so for the, for the fourth and fifth regulation periods, uh, uh, the, the model has developed so far beyond the classical methods that, uh, that it's not really useful anymore. So recall from the previous uh, lecture that, uh, that we had uh, the frontier, frontier production function uh, defining the uh, maximum output that can be, can be produced with a given set of inputs. So with the cost frontier model, we can, we can uh, model the same thing but, uh, but uh, taking more like input-oriented perspective. So in this case, uh, we have multiple outputs, but just a single input. So we have now aggregated all inputs, both capital and labor, labor and everything, to a single total cost aggregate, which I indicate here by X. And we have multiple outputs. We have uh, three output variables here. Uh, Y1 refers to the supply of energy. Y2 is the, the length of the network, and Y3 is the number of customers connected to the network. So the, these three outputs then, then uh, define the, uh, are used as an argument uh, for the cost uh, frontier. So the capital C refers to the frontier cost function, and capital C defines the minimum cost of producing these services, uh, Y1, Y2, and Y3. So there's uh, transmission of energy, but also uh, the, the length of network and the number of cost customers. So the situation is similar to the frontier production function, but now we actually define the minimum costs based on the cost frontier. So this is an equivalent way of uh, thinking about the, the, the frontier. So we can also have this kind of input-oriented cost frontier defined as the minimum cost. Um, 
recall also from the production function case we had there u and v u was the inefficiency term and v was the usual kind of error term which we call here random noise so notice now that uh, that uh, u has a positive sign plus rather than minus in the case of the uh, frontier production function inefficiency was uh, had a negative sign because uh, any deviation due to inefficiency would decrease the output when we talk about the cost frontier on the other hand uh, the inefficiency term is one-sided but it has a positive sign so uh, whenever there is inefficiency in the cost frontier framework uh, then it increases the cost so it adds to the total cost rather than decreases it that's why we need to have a positive sign for the inefficiency term and also one more new component uh, to the cost frontier model that i have introduced is this uh, z variable uh, by z we indicate here the proportion of underground cables and this is supposed to be an indicator of the operating environment uh, where the companies uh, uh, remember that the companies are local monopolies uh, so some of the companies are operating in urban environment like in helsinki and so and many of the companies are operating in rural areas so the proportion of underground cables at that time was used as an indicator of the of the urban versus uh, versus rural networks because uh, uh, whatever the companies do they cannot really uh, relocate themselves to another another location they are they are local monopolies serving this given service area and uh, and uh, this uh, z variable is uh, intending to take into account uh, additional unobserved heterogeneity which this output variables y do not manage to capture so later this uh, z variable has been replaced by another indicator when the many many companies are using underground cables also in rural areas but at that time it was a useful indicator for the for the rural versus urban operating environment and in this course we will also also consider this kind of uh, a question of how do we model the operating environment or how do we model this kind of uh, uh, z variables which are not really outputs which are also not really inputs but which affect the, the performance either through the technology or through the uh, efficiency so we come back to that question uh, in later in the course so that forms one of the important uh, uh, questions that we will try to address so this characterizes the the cost frontier model and uh, remember the idea with the with the use of the frontier in the regulation is that uh, the companies cannot charge necessarily their actual cost but rather this uh, cost frontier determines the acceptable level of uh, of uh, operational cost or, or variable cost if you like A couple of more detailed notes still about the cost. So what does this cost variable takes into account? So in this specification, we, we specify the total cost uh, as a sum of both uh, operational expenditures, but we also take into account the cost of capital. And uh, there's also additional component that which, uh, which uh, gives an additional penalty for the interruptions, which is this KAH. So the total cost consist of multiple parts and uh, then there is also the energy energy supply is also includes both uh, low voltage but also also medium and high voltage uh, um, distribution and uh, these different voltage levels are aggregated by using certain certain uh, um, uh, average coefficients so it's an aggregate of uh, elect electricity supply at different voltage levels so coming back to this uh, this empirical question has the how do, how well does the yardstick competition function in in uh, finland compared to its uh, its uh, uh, neighboring nordic countries uh, i have made some some calculations actually to compare this and and uh, on this diagram i illustrates the the average transmission distribution tariffs uh, for the household compute consumers in uh, in the four nordic countries uh, uh, i have excluded iceland because uh, iceland is not part of the north pole market and why why the north pole is important 
Uh, I have actually calculated these, uh, these tariffs by taking, first of all, the Eurostat uh, uh, statistics of the average consumer prices of electricity. And from this Eurostat statistics, I have subtracted the market price of the, of the energy. So from the North Pole uh, power exchange, what is the market price of the electric power in these four different countries? So the difference between the uh, average consumer price and the, and the market price of energy must be then attributed to the transmission and distribution and potentially other, other monopoly uh, power of the companies. So as you can see from this diagram, this might come as a, as a surprise to many of you. Uh, actually, compared to the other countries uh, in Nordic, uh, Nordic region, uh, Transmission and distribution tariffs in Finland are not high at all. Actually, they are almost comparable to the to Denmark. Of course, Denmark is is uh, about a similar size in population with Finland, but much more highly, more, much more densely populated. So, to distribute uh, electricity in Denmark, you don't need so much uh, power cables as you would need in Finland. So, in my my interpretation, this demonstrates that, uh, that uh, electricity transmission and distribution is actually very efficient uh, in Finland compared to the other Nordic countries. Of course, this, uh, these uh, distribution firms are local monopolies everywhere, not just in Finland. They are also in other Nordic countries, but, but everywhere in the world. So there is not any, any free competition in this industry in anywhere. So that was the situation for the household consumers. I have also a similar graph for the, for the industrial consumers, so non-household consumers. In this diagram, actually most of the time periods, uh, Finland has, uh, has lower tariffs than any other countries, including Denmark. So in, on average, the, the consumer prices uh, were relatively level but uh, but where the where the uh, efficiency improvement has actually benefited mostly is the non-household consumers so actually it is the electricity consuming firms that have mainly benefited from the from the tighter regulation of the of the electricity distribution firms whereas benefits have not really reached the consumers i still come back to this this diagram so why it is then that there is the uh, general public has the opinion that tariffs are increasing. Of course, in certain, uh, certain uh, companies, the tariffs have really increased a lot, but then also in other, there exist companies where tariffs have also decreased. So on the average, there is not such kind of huge price hikes when we take into account the whole Finland, not just the, some selected companies. And uh, of course, the, the tariff disturb this version between companies has increased over this time. So this diagram with average transmission prices doesn't really reflect that one. So indeed, there exist companies that have increased their tariffs a lot, but uh, usually media doesn't really uh, make headlines when, when some companies lowering the tariffs, and especially when it is to the industrial consumers, like in this case. So clearly, there is also... Uh, reason for further debate about this is, is this kind of uh, favoring the non-household consumers over household consumers uh, really fair, which has not actually attracted much attention in the, in the Finnish debate at all. But overall, based on these results, I would argue that, uh, that uh, the regulation of Finnish electricity distribution firms is far ahead of uh, other Nordic countries or any, any other country in the world for that matter. So I will then continue this uh, example in the, in the second set of, uh, of uh, online lectures. So the next topic is uh, uh, data envelopment analysis. And I will actually start with the illustration of DEA applied to this uh, case of electricity distribution companies that I just uh, described in this lecture.